and just hot my brumby because it was just way too slow. The E81 used more oil than fuel, so it was time to upgrade to an EJ for more torque and reliability. We've got a donor car, all we'll be taking is the engine and the wiring loom. Now to freshen up the EJ, we'll start by removing all the accessories and then moving on to removing the timing cover and harmonic balance site to set the timing up. Now I'll go around with a paint pen and mark all the timing marks on the block, heads, and also the cam and crank pulley. This just makes it easy to see if the timing is set up. Now there's normally a little metal bracket that goes on the crank pulley here. This stops the belt jumping off if you toe start the vehicle. This has to be set up correctly, otherwise it will chew out the belt. I normally jam a bit of cardboard in between the belt and this bracket and then tighten the bolts up and that gives you the correct specification. With the belt off, it's time to remove the both side rocker covers followed by the heads. We'll clean up both mounting surfaces so we get a decent seal and then we'll use a straight edge to check warpage of the head. And now I normally run RVT in the bottom half of the head gasket, this just makes them last heaps longer and no leaky poos. You can check the stretch of the head bolts and if they're in spec you can reuse them and then follow the manufacturer's specification to get the torque procedure. We'll put on our new water pump followed by our tying belt kit. This comes with new belt, tensioner and idler pulleys. The Subaru belts have lines on them that line up with the tie marks, this makes them incredibly easy to put on and get the correct tension. Then we'll throw our timing cover back on and we'll adjust these valves. To do this you need a feeler gauge, make sure your rocker arms are on the rock and sliding the feeler gauge between the rocker arm and the valve using a 12mm spanner and a screwdriver you can adjust it. The inlet clearances will be different to the exhaust clearance so make sure you check the manufacturer's specification. We'll replace the rocker cover gaskets and then I decided to paint this manifold red because it looks sick. Time to pull that E81 out, we've got to get this flywheel off, we'll need that, the rest of them go straight in the bin. Don't forget to like and subscribe. On to elongate the holes in our cross member, this will allow our EJ engine mounts just to slide on home. Throwing in these weird bolts and our adapter plate will be able to mount our EJ up against our original 4 speed gearbox. We've got to replace this noisy thrust bearing, and then on to elongate the holes in our flywheel so it mounts up against our EJ crank. We've got this heavy duty clutch here so it can handle the horsepower of this EJ. Then on to our wiring, we've got that back so we've just got to set all our wiring up, wire that into our factory Brumby system, still controlled by the Forrester ECU. We've got our inline EFI fuel pump here. It was very noisy and has since been replaced. Next, we've got to measure up and work out our radiator situation. We've got this pipe here. I just flared it so the hoses wouldn't fall off it and then we welded them onto this Brumby aluminium radiator. It was not very fun to weld. It sucked. With the radiator home, we've got to work out some hoses and finish off some dirty wiring issues. And we'll just jam that up there because that looks good. Now on to patching our dirty exhaust. This will be getting the turbo soon, so we didn't put too much effort into it, and someone threw my welding helmet and broke it. We're going to drill out this firewall so we can run our forester accelerator cable. 